Queen Latifah. I am honored to be here. I mean, oh. and first of all, I'm proud to almost celebrate 20 years since your first album mm -hmm. and one of my favorite tracks, Rap for My Madness. Yes. You really know about that. But I still <laughs> got the wax with, you know, oh, with the cover. So, but it's great to see your career having gone from there to producing and, and acting in television and film. How was it getting involved with this picture? Like, what was your, what was your uh, inspiration to get, in, get involved with this project? Uh, well, I read the book. Um, actually, the script, there was a script that came around years back. Uh, and so, and this book was really popular. I, a bunch of people I knew had it. So I went and got the book. I read it. I loved it. Um, the script was okay. It wasn't quite where it needed to be. It sort of went up and then it kind of fizzled out. Uh, cut to a few years later, get a call, hey, Gina did a pass on Secret Life of Bees and the studio's excited and everybody's excited about it. So I read it and I'm like, this is good. You know, okay, well let's sit down and talk about it. You know, so, you know, I talked to Gina and heard her take on it, what she thought about it, what she wanted to do with it. We talked about it and how I felt about it. And we were on the same page. So I signed up and it was a go. Well, in this movie you're dealing with bees and these beehives, were you ever stung or anything? Like I didn't get stung, thankfully, because I didn't have any gloves on or anything. I just had to handle the bees with tender love and care, go real slow, and give them to the beekeeper and get the hell up out of there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it was a little challenging because it was, it was, we shot this in winter and, and bees are a bit temperamental. They don't really like the cold weather. Right. So uh, they weren't, you know, feeling like uh, acting too much uh, yeah. at first. But, um, it got a bit warmer and they were just relaxed and mellow and you could totally see the difference. It was like night and day. And, um, you know, I, I loved it. It was really cool. It was different. Who we got here? I'm Lily and this is Rosaline. We need a place to stay. You see, my mother died of tularemia when I was little, and my daddy just got killed in a tractor accident on our farm in Spartanburg County. So me and Rosaline, she's our housekeeper. We're on our way to Virginia to stay with my Aunt Bernie, so I don't have money for a train ticket or a motel, and not that anyone would take it a Negro woman, even though it's a violation of the Civil Rights Act. I'm sorry. We can't help you. We can't have them living on the side of the road. Why don't you call your aunt? See about us sending you some train fare. I would. She just had a real big operation and she's still staying in the hospital. So maybe Rosalie and I can just work for the money and then just be on our way. Well, I guess Rosaline can help May in the kitchen. And you can help me and Zach with the bees. August. We got the cots in the honey house. Different. Now, being said in the 60s and, and none of us was around during those you know tumultuous times mm -hmm. how was it relaying to what blacks were going through there and you know actually playing a role for it so so you you had to like adopt it how is how is that feeling for you today like did you come out of that feeling different about your accomplishments or where you are, are today every time i do a film especially one that has this kind of content in it whether it was hairspray or this, you know, uh, or life support or anything. I mean, it, there's so many places where you can uh, apply that. I'm thankful. I wouldn't even be able to do what I do today if people didn't come before me and break those walls down and take bad roles so that they could just get their faces in there and keep building it and building it and building it for me to be able to come and have sort of my choice on what kind of roles that I'd like to do. So, you know, it's for me to continue to push that. but. Absolutely. It's something that you think about, and if anything, it makes you give even more respect to the role that you're playing in the film that you're doing. I mean, Hairspray was a big old musical, but in that March scene, I'm really thinking about the fact that if this was 40 years ago, these white kids and these black kids would totally be separated. Between takes, everybody's together, they're cracking jokes, we're having fun. Action. Okay, black kids here over here, okay, white kids here. It's just weird to even hear that on a set, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, let alone see it in right. real life. So, uh, yeah, you have to be cognizant that, that, that this really happened. Um, but I, I, what I love about this film is we got to show different sides of it. Right. Of course, we got to see the heavy-handed hand of racism and bigotry. 
the anger, the violence of it. But we also got to see the more subtle sides of it, you know. Um, uh, and the fact that whites and blacks did business together back then. He's, this guy in the town has got a, this woman's honey jars right in his front window mm -hmm. and brags about, you know, how, you know, he, he likes these boat right ladies and, and he loves this honey. But at the same time, uh, he's not, he's not going to let this white girl and this black girl come into this restaurant and sit down and have a meal. Uh, but he will serve you, but you're going to take it to go. You know, yeah. it's just like, it's so complex. Um, and it's nice to see more of the complexities of it than just blatant on either side. I hate white hair. I hate black hair. And that's <laughs> it. You know what I mean? It just, because that's just so, that that's, yeah. I don't yeah. think it was always like that. You know, so it's right. nice to see the, de the, you know, the more the subtleties of it all. All right. Now, last question. You being queen of hip hop and everything. What is your feelings on the state of hip hop today? I know you have an album coming out soon. Yeah. I love hip hop, and I, I can't really state that any other way. I love hip hop, I always will love hip hop. It's in my bones, it's in my blood. My career is owed to it. You know, if I didn't have it, I don't know how I would've got into acting, you right. know, cause Spike was looking for a female rapper when I got my first role. That's who he looked for, you know, and that was my way in, you know, but, um, Everything goes through its phases, its ups and downs. I think, if anything, hip hop is something we have to treasure more. Okay. We have to treasure the music, we have to treasure the artists, we have to treasure the artists that came before us and continue to build it and grow it. I don't see why I run DMC, you know, or, or Eric B and Rock Kim or, or Boogie Down Productions shouldn't be touring right now off of their old records right. and making new records, you know. Um, I think they should be, you know, they're, they're like royalty to right. us, and they should be held up high. Big Daddy Kane, I want to see him rock a show. Yeah. I want to see Light. I want to see Salt and Pepper. I want to see me. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like I, I think, you know, we just have to continue to let it grow, let it broaden, let the young bucks do what they do, and don't judge them for it, you know, because it, it's that's just it continuing to grow and morph. It has to continue to change and and become what it is, and we, we should just be there for them, you know, to try and share wisdom, share knowledge, and let them take it and run with it, you know, and, and uh, we do what we do so that we supply our age group with the kind of music that we want to listen to, right. you know, so, I mean, I love Nas's album. Nas's album, I think, appeals to the young as well as those in my age group. I could throw that album on and, and rock with it. I could rock with Jay-Z's album. I could listen to Wayne's album, but, you know, I still want to hear, like, I want to hear the choices, and, right. you know, from the, the most trendy stuff, you know, to, to just the most solid, you know, uh, dead prayers of somebody, you know. I want right. to hear all of that, you know. Um, but I think our, we're growing up. The hip-hop generation is growing up. We got 50-year-olds and that are part of the hip hop generation, 50 something year olds at least, you know? Yeah. And so um, they listen to the beats and rhymes still, you know, they right. wanna hear it, you know? And um, we just have to make sure that there's a supply of it, you know, that we continue to let it grow. Cause it's just like rock and roll. I mean, we got, you know, we created that music, that genre of music. Um, and there's a lot of old heads rocking music. The, the Rolling Stones are still touring and they're a great band It's because Rock and rollers have appreciated and treasured them, and, and they've grown with the people, you know, that are coming to see their shows, you know. So we just have to kind of follow that model, I think, in a, a certain way and um, keep building. 